27th session and this is a problem solving session on discrete time systems in the transform domain. The problems that I have chosen were dictated by one of the students and each of them has a small amount of uh, <coughs> twist which requires a little bit of exercise of the gray cells. The first problem that I take is 414. This is relatively simple. The problem states that the magnitude response of a digital filter with real coefficient transfer function, real coefficient transfer function h of z, the magnitude response is shown in this figure. 0 to pi and mod h of e to the j omega. The response is not to scale 0.2 pi and 0.3 pi. Plot the magnitude response of h of z to the power 4. This is relatively simple. This is what is wanted. Magnitude response of h of z to the power 4 required. This is the problem. The solution is very simple. z to the 4 means you will have e to the power j 4 omega. And therefore, this pi shall be reduced to pi by 4. 4 omega equal to pi shall mean omega equal to pi by 4. And each of these shall be divided by 4. And there shall be 4 such sections between 0 and pi which shall repeat this. In this repetition, you have to be a little bit careful. You have to extend it if you want to do that carefully without any mistake you have to extend this axis to 4 pi. So, the division by pi reduces the scale to 0 to pi and between pi and 2 pi the same thing will be repeated but in a flipped fashion okay? and therefore, the final diagram shall be like this. pi by 4, pi by 2, 3 pi by 4 and pi. This is omega magnitude of h of e to the j 4 omega. And so, we shall have <coughs> again not to scale like this and here it shall be in a flipped manner. So, it will come like this and this. Similarly, here and here between 3 pi by 4 and pi and these ordinates shall be 0.2 pi by 4, 0.3 pi by 4, this would be, this would be 1.8 pi by 4. 0.2 pi yes. so and this shall be 1.7 pi by 4. Similarly, this would be this would be 2.2 pi by 4 2 pi plus 0.2 pi and this would be 2.3 pi by 4. This would be 3.7 pi by 4 agreed and this would be 3.8 pi by 4 that is it that is the picture. It shall be repeated and obviously this is a case of interpolation. It is a case of interpolation that is three samples are put in between two successive samples and this is what the spectrum becomes and if you want to retain the only one part of the spectrum then you shall have to use a low pass filter 
we shall cut out all this. Otherwise, this will create problems. So, an interpolator is always succeeded by a low pass filter. Otherwise, aliasing may occur, <coughs> shall occur, yes. The next problem is 442. It is also not difficult. It is given two magnitude responses are given G L e to the G omega magnitude and G H e to the G omega versus omega <coughs> 0 to pi 0 to pi and one is a low pass filter and the other is a high pass filter and the the edge is sorry pi by 2 they are ideal filters and therefore they rise like this one drops to 0 at pi by 2 then pi by 2 to pi all that you have to do is exercise a little care in drawing this diagram. This is what is given and then you are given a block diagram x sub z feeds into two filters g l of z squared and g h of z squared. It is a continuation of the previous problem. Here there shall be two repetitions e to the j 2 omega and then this breaks up into two channels g l of z and g h of z. This is y 0 of z, this is y 1 of z. Similarly, this breaks up now the importance of the arrows, the signal flow must be indicated. This breaks up into two, again G L of Z and G H of Z. This is Y 2 of Z, Y 3 of Z. The problem is to find out <coughs> First, the transfer functions h k of z equal to y k of z divided by x sub z and then plot their magnitude responses. <coughs> Omega is going? Correct. Now, this was intentional. Tell me why I did this. Why should it continue beyond pi? It is high pass and if I continue beyond pi, then it should continue pi 2 and it should 3 pi by 2. That is correct. That is correct. This is a interesting point. <coughs> we normally do not have to account for this. Because it is a z squared, it is an interpolator and therefore you require the sketch between 0 to 2 pi, agreed? Then only we shall be able to compress it to 0 to pi and therefore it is important that this continuation is noted, okay? <coughs> very good. Now the transfer functions are of course very simple, h0 would be g l z squared multiplied by g l of z. Then h y h one should be g l g squared multiplied by g h and so on. This is obvious. The plots I shall do one or two plots. The rest you can do. First, you have to plot g l of e to the j two omega and g h of e to the j two omega. Okay, and you shall have to go up to pi. So this is pi by two, and obviously. The, <coughs> the compression will give rise to a transfer function magnitude which is 1 up to up to pi by 4. That is it and then 
from 3 pi by 4 to pi by pi okay so it would be something like this we don't have to go beyond we shall cut it off here we don't require the rest of it okay because pi is our ultimate frequency digital frequency similarly what would be g h g h of e to the j 2 omega magnitude shall be shall start from pi by 4 and go up to 3 pi by 4 that is right. Once this is known then only the multiplication of this divided multiplication of this by the given responses and you can find out what shall remain. For example, which one here? No, what did we have? We had 0 to pi by 2, okay. So, 0 to pi by 4, and then I shall have from 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi, and this becomes 3 pi by 4 to pi, and that is what it becomes 3 pi by 4 to pi, okay. So, it is a multiplication now of the corresponding responses. For example, I will simply draw without explanation, it is it's obvious what it should be. H0 for example shall be the multiplication of, of this response by, by this response. So, we shall have only 1 between 0 and pi by 4, the rest shall be 0. <coughs> this is pi. H 1 of e to the j omega magnitude shall exist. H 1 is this low pass thing multiplied by the high pass response this one. So, I shall get from pi by 4 3 pi by 4 to pi that is it. Three pi by four to pi. So here we should end it to zero or no? We, our processing cannot go beyond this, cannot go beyond pi, and therefore we shall bring it to zero. Okay, or we shall leave it there. It does not matter. We shall never reach pi. Okay. Then H two and H three both shall be band pass. Okay, H3 shall extend from pi by 4 to pi by 2. This is H3, I am not drawing the diagram. And H4 shall extend from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 4. That is right. So, that solves the problem. Next, we enter a domain which uh, requires programming 474. You cannot do it by observation. In 474, five transfer functions are given h1, h2, h3, h4, and h5. I am not writing them down. And <coughs> it says determine the zero locations of each. Obviously, you cannot do it analytically. The degree, the order is 6. You have to use a MATLAB program or a root finding program to determine the roots and then answer the following question. Do does any of them have linear phase? Well, that can be answered. If it is linear phase, then the coefficient should be symmetrical or anti-symmetrical and only one of them, the second transfer function H2 of Z, if you notice carefully, has symmetrical symmetrical yes, yes. coefficients and therefore that is linear phase. From the others which one is minimum phase and which one is maximum phase cannot be answered 
without finding the roots. But there is a way which I have not discussed in the class. We shall look at this uh, in a later problem. Later problem is also like this. I have, I have tried to break into this and uh, find the solution. That might answer this question also, but may not also. Okay? We shall have to leave with a may. Why? We will come back later. So H2 is minimum phase, uh, not minimum phase, a linear phase. Linear phase. That is definite. There is no question mark here. But whenever you are answering maximum phase or minimum phase, uh, there is an ambiguity. There may occur an ambiguity. No, this is not in for that is the problem I will take later. 76, I will take later. But let us do the in between one 475, which s happens to be easy. 475, we shall take 476 also. In 475, the statement of the problem is a third order FIR filter has a transfer function G1 of Z is equal to 6 minus Z inverse minus 12 z to the minus 2 multiplied by 2 plus 5 z inverse. This is the transfer function that is given. Then you have to answer the following questions. Determine the transfer functions of all other FIR filters which have the same magnitude response as that of G1 of Z. So find all transfer functions whose magnitude is the same as the magnitude of G of e to the j omega. Okay. <clears throat> Second part, <coughs> which ones are minimum phase and which ones are maximum phase and which ones are maximum phase. Then the third part, part C, relates to the impulse response and partial energy. This is where the answer to the question of minimum phase and maximum phase lies and I shall point it out when I talk about 476. And this third part is simply a matter of computation. Once you find out the impulse responses of all these transfer functions, if you can find out the transfer functions, you know the impulse response, right? The coefficients of the variable. These are the impulse response coefficients. So let us first find out all transfer functions whose magnitude is the same as that of g of e to the j omega. Now since it is only a third order, there has to be a real pole and the real pole is already given 1 plus 5 by 2 z inverse. This is the real 0, not pole. This is the real 0. 0 is at minus 5 by 2, minus 2.5. Okay. And then the other quantity 6 minus z inverse minus 12 z to the minus 2. A little bit of thought will show that you can you can factorize this into 6 multiplied by 1 plus z inverse 1 minus 2 z inverse. Okay. Uh, the clue was very simple. See if you put here 6 minus 6 plus 6 z inverse then you get minus 12z inverse minus 12z to the minus 2. So 1 plus no? Have I made a mistake? 6 minus 12, yes, 1 minus 2 z. 6 minus 12, then 6 minus 9 plus 8. Oh, I made a wrong factorization. Okay, let's see. 
6 minus z inverse minus 12 z to the minus 2. What is the factor 6 minus 9z <coughs> inverse plus 8z inverse minus 12 z to the minus 2. So this becomes uh, 3 2 minus 3z inverse plus 4 z inverse 2 minus 3 z inverse I stand corrected 2 minus 3 z inverse this is not correct. So I get this as equal to 3 plus 4 z inverse 2 minus 3 z inverse and I can write this as in order to make the zeros transparent I write this as 6 1 plus 4 by 3 z inverse and then 1 minus 3 by 2 z inverse. So my given transfer function g 1 of z is equal to 12, 12 is okay, 1 plus 5 by 2 z inverse then 1 plus 4 by 3 z inverse 1 minus 3 by 2 z inverse. Before I find the alternative transfer functions, notice that this is maximum phase. All zeros are outside the unit circle. Okay, and then what will, what your procedure would be to be to replace each of these factors by an by another factor, such that the magnitude is the same, not 0. First magnitude should be the same. Now the magnitude of 1 plus 5 by 2 z inverse, 5 by 2 plus z inverse, the magnitude of this for z equal to e to the g omega, it is all pass and therefore this is 1. This is the clue to the whole solution. And therefore if you write g to z, as equal to 5 by 2 plus z inverse multiplied by 12 then 1 plus 4 by 3 z inverse 1 minus 3 by 2 z inverse you do not change any other the magnitude shall be the same. But then <coughs> you have to bring this 5 by 2 out so it would be 30. 1 plus 2 by 5 z inverse multiplied by these two factors. This will have the same magnitude response and this is what you have to repeat for the other two factors taken one at a time. So how many do you get? We have a g1 then g2, g3, g4 then taken two at a time. So g5, g6 then taken 3 at a time g7 is that all yes. 7 transfer function and the last one shall be minimum phase in between you shall have mixed phase transfer functions okay. So the second third part as I said uh, takes care of partial energies that is third part asks for finding g k n and then calculating e k n as what is the 8? When you will take 2 at a time you can make 3. From 3, 3 fact 3 c 2 is 3. You, you are right, you are right. One more, yes. That is right, that is right. I made a mistake. The third one says g k squared m, <coughs> m equal to 0 to n, 0 less than equal to n less than equal to 3. You see g k is an FIR, it is FIR, finite impulse response and if you find e k 0, e k 0 it only contains g k 0. So it is partial energy. Then when you make n equal to 1, <coughs> it is again partial energy, it will be increased. 
the total energy shall be m equal to 0 to whatever the highest length is. What is the highest coefficient? g k s what will be the length of the g k s? All of them, all of them are third order and therefore the length would be 4, is not that right? He wants only to you, you to calculate from 0 to 3, in other words not the total energy but the partial energy and then some identities or inequalities have to be shown. This is a matter of computation, you can do that. But this <coughs> <coughs> this example, it is still, oh n is equal to 3, it is the total energy, yes, you are right, because m equal to 0 to 3, it is the total energy, okay. So, E k n, n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, with 3, it is the total energy. Now, partial energies obviously shall be smaller than the total energy, because there is a square here and this is a real quantity, so it is whether positive or negative, it shall add up as you add up more samples. The partial energy, <coughs> it is a property of minimum phase and maximum phase functions that the partial energy is higher for minimum phase and lower for maximum phase. In fact, if you take all the transfer functions and calculate the, <coughs> the partial energies for all, then the partial energy for the minimum phase shall be the highest of all of them. You have 8 transfer functions you say, yes. of these 8, the 8th one, the minimum phase one shall be the highest partial energy, whether n equal to 0 or 1 or 2, it is always true. And the maximum phase 1 shall have the minimum partial energy, okay. And many a times looking at the constant term suffices, the one with the highest constant term is a candidate for, for minimum phase, but you cannot say definitely because the in interior ones may also contribute. <coughs> no, no, it is only a candidate, it is a candidate for minimum phase, but you cannot say definitely. <coughs> now we take 476 and the question is a rock state. I did not want to write all of them. The, is it clear on the, the Z transforms of 5 sequences of length 7 are given below, okay, H1, H2, H3. Magnitude of the DFT for each of the above sequences is the same. Which one of the above Z transform has all its zeros outside the unit circle? Okay. Now, <coughs> outside the unit circle, all its zeros outside the unit circle means that the product of the roots shall be greater than 1, yes. agreed? Therefore, the coefficient of z to the minus 6 shall be greater than 1 and only h1 and h3 qualify, right? Is that clear? It is if all the roots are outside the unit circle, then z i greater than 1 i equal to 1 to 6. Pardon me? No, no. The question is which one of the above zero has all its zeros outside the unit circle? Yes, wait, 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 wait. Still the product can be? No, it is, your question is which one of the above Z transform has all its zeros, all, all its zeros outside the unit circle? No, no, this is, yes, okay, 
That's why I'm saying they're candidates. <laughs> it's not necessarily, we cannot pinpoint, we cannot answer this question without actually finding out their roots. We can only say which are the candidates, possible candidates. Possible candidates are H1 and H3. They are candidates for maximum phase function, okay. Of these two now, of these candidates, they may or may not. No, that they are maximum. Minimum phase. Pardon me? Zeros outside the unit circle is minimum phase? Maximum phase. They are candidates. But of all these, you cannot say, okay, none, none, none of the others qualify for this. None of the others, H1 and H3 are the only ones. The more probable one, which one is more probable? Maximum phase has to have minimum partial energy. Maximum phase has minimum partial energy. Now obviously, if you look at H1 and H3, and if you calculate the partial energies, it turns out that H3, why H3? Well, H3, the, yeah, the, no one can't say definitely. Minimum constant term, constant term is not minimum here. No one cannot say definitely. You have to calculate the partial energies to be able to find that. But calculating partial energies for all of them is as good or as bad a task as finding out the actual roots. And therefore, one cannot answer definitely. Which one has all its zeros inside the unit circle? Now, who are the candidates? Inside the unit circle, all its zeros inside the unit circle means the constant term must be less than 1. Not constant term, the, the highest power, that is coefficient of z to the minus 6. Now, which one has the, uh, all others, h2, h4 and h6 and <coughs> Uh, of all these, what is the, which one is the lowest? H2. But one cannot say so definitely. Case, uh, H5 will be the minimum, of, sir, minimum phase. But H5 is a mixed phase. We know that. Because it's alpha. It's because? Linear phase, linear phase function. H5. So H5 goes out of the picture. Yes. Very good observation. 0 0.75, 0 0.75. So H5 is neither minimum phase nor maximum so phase. According to our that uh, the z is minus 6 coefficient. So yes. It so it can be candidate minimum phase. No, it's a mixed phase. It cannot be a candidate for minimum phase or maximum phase. No. That candidacy is barred. All right. So it goes out of the picture with respect to these two questions. Right. So you have to choose between your, your narrowing down your vision. But even then, even then, even if you pinpoint on one, you cannot say definitely without finding the roots. Therefore, this solution of this problem requires finding the roots to be able to arrive at a definite answer. Partial energy is an indication, but not a confirmatory test. All right? So, what is the significance of first statement? The magnitude of the EFT of each of the sequences is same. You know, not the last statement. Okay. It, because the last question, last part of the question, how many other real sequences of length 7 exist having the same DFT magnitude as those given above? Uh, <coughs> DFT magnitude means magnitudes of x of k and this number has also to be determined by actual calculation. It turns out to be 26 or 27. Mm, that is also a guesswork. 
you have to actually this question cannot be answered without using MATLAB all right. Sir, but if there any significance in the first statement sir. Which statement? So the magnitude of the DFT of the number sequence is the Haan, same. This is relevant to the last one. It has nothing to do with finding no, the same. No, no, no. Because the energy will be the same sir. Energy will be the same. Energy will be the same. But that does not mean DFT, you see energy is magnitude xk squared summation over k. That does not mean that the sequences are identical, no. There may exist many other sequences uh, and you might get tired in finding out how many sequences have the same, same DFT. Pardon me? If we add up H1 and H2. So they become, uh, uh, and that becomes uh, linear phase. Does that infer anything? The sum of two linear phases is not linear phase. No, sir. H1 yeah. plus H2 yeah. is the linear phase. Correct. That does not indicate anything. We can have, we can, in other words, we can decompose a linear phase into sum of two um, polynomials. One can be maximum phase, one can be minimum phase, both can be mixed phase. It does not matter, it does not indicate anything. The product of two linear phase polynomials is linear phase, okay. That is ensured. Product of two linear phase polynomials is linear phase. Our next problem is 482. 482 states, let F1Z denote one of the factors of a linear phase FIR transfer <coughs> function H of Z. H of Z is F1 Z multiplied by some other factors, let us say F2 Z. This is given. And the question is determine at least another factor F2 Z of H Z for the following choices of F1. The choices are A F1 Z equal to 1 plus 2 Z inverse plus 3 Z to the minus 2. B F2 F1 Z equal to 3 plus 5 Z inverse minus 4 Z to the minus 2 minus 2 Z to the minus 3. One of the approaches can be, one of the approaches can be find out the roots. For a quadratic it is perfectly all right, we can find the roots. For a, for a cubic we have to search for the real root, then find the roots of the quadratic. But there is a simpler approach. Simpler approach is, you know, again obsession with all pass functions. In all pass functions, the poles and zeros are reciprocal pairs. Agreed? Reciprocal pairs. And the magnitude of the numerator is the same as the magnitude of the denominator. Agreed? In an all pass function. The second important fact is that for a linear phase, zeros occur in reciprocal pairs. That is if Z0 is a 0, then 1 by Z0 is also a 0. Now, if I want to make an all pass function out of this, 1 plus 2Z inverse plus 3Z to the minus 2, do not worry about stability. If I want to make, then my, my function obviously shall be 3 plus 2Z inverse plus Z to the minus 2. Now, if this is D of Z, then obviously this is z to the minus 2 d of z inverse. In other words, the, if z0 is a 0 of dz, then 1 by z0 is a 0 of the numerator. And therefore, my clear choices, obvious choices would be f2z is 3 plus 2z inverse plus z to the minus 2, just reverse the coefficients. For a, and for B, it shall be minus 2 minus 4 Z inverse plus 5 Z to the minus 2 plus 3 Z to the minus 3. That is it. 
very simple question. Two facts I have used. One is that the numerator of an all pass function can be written as z to the minus n d of z inverse. So, the zeros and poles are in reciprocal pairs and for a linear phase function the zeros occur in reciprocal pairs. So, the only other term that I have to add is this. Okay. I can add more terms He says at least one factor. Okay. Let me complicate the problem a little bit. Suppose I have <coughs> h of z I have obtained this 1 plus 2z inverse plus 3z to the minus 2 multiplied by 3 plus 2z inverse plus z to the minus 2. Suppose the question is question is to find a fifth order linear phase polynomial by using the simplest possible modification h prime of z simplest possible modification what shall you do multiply by oh wonderful multiply by z inverse yes that will become a fifth order is it linear phase yes it is linear phase okay suppose we do not want we want to change the uh, <coughs> Now wait a second. Suppose that is not permitted. <laughs> what is the plus next simple? Plus minus, one. plus minus 1. So we shall use 1 plus minus z inverse. If I use a plus sign, shall it be symmetrical or anti symmetrical? If I use the plus sign, the impulse response shall be symmetrical. symmetrical. Okay. If I use the minus sign, it becomes anti-symmetrical, right? One more complication. Suppose this is given. You want to make the transfer function symmetrical impulse response. This is given. You have to add one or more terms the degree is no restriction so that you get a symmetrical impulse response. Yes? How would you do that? Just square it. Then this anti shall go. If you square it, then this becomes a symmetrical impulse response. So, symmetrical multiplied by symmetrical shall also remain symmetrical. On the other hand, if this is given you want to make it asymmetrical, then you raised to the power 3. So, 1 minus z inverse raised to even powers gives you symmetrical impulse response. Odd powers it gives rise to anti-symmetrical. If on the other hand I had this one and I raise 1 plus z inverse to any power even or odd, does the symmetry or anti-symmetry change? No, it does not change. Okay? Right. These are some of the uh, interesting points. <coughs> Okay. The next problem is 485. It is an interesting problem. <coughs> 485. Let me see. Uh, shall we do this or shall we? Okay. We may, we may conclude with this. 485a show that the phase delay tau p of omega. You remember we had defined group delay tau g of omega as the negative gradient of phase minus d phi omega d omega. This is what is significant for a linear phase and any group of frequencies, transmission of any group of frequencies. But phase delay tau p omega which is defined as minus theta omega over omega is also important in some cases minus theta omega divided by omega particularly when you are not concerned with a band of frequencies 
for a, for a single sinusoid, this is okay. Phase delay is okay. When, whenever there is a group of frequencies, the modulation is involved, that group delay is the more important thing. This problem says tau p omega show that the phase delay of the first order all pass function a 1 z equal to d 1 plus z inverse 1 plus d 1 z inverse is given by tau p omega approximately equal to 1 minus d 1 divided by 1 plus d 1 equal to delta defined as delta this is the first part. And the second part says design a first order all pass filter given that delta is 0 0.5 tau p omega is 0 0.5 see tau p omega normally should be a function of frequency it is approximated by a constant the constant is 0 0.5 for a given design and the sampling frequency f s is given as 20 kilohertz. You will see the relevance of this. F s is 20 kilohertz. Then determine the error in samples error at 1 kilohertz in the phase delay from its design value of 0.5 samples. Okay? The sampling frequency is 20 kilohertz. Error, you have to find the error that is deviation from 0.5 at 1 kilohertz. Why is the sampling frequency given? So that you can find the normalized digital frequency, small omega. All right. Now let us do the first part. Second part would be very simple. <coughs> you can write A1 of e to the j omega as equal to d 1 plus e to the minus j omega divided by 1 plus d 1 e to the minus j omega. In finding the phase it is convenient this is a crucial uh, manipulation simple but very crucial it is convenient to write this as e to the minus j omega write the numerator and denominator in the same form except the sign of the exponential. So, I get 1 plus d 1 e to the j omega 1 plus d 1 e to the minus j omega and therefore, the phase is given by minus omega for this factor plus for the numerator it would be tan inverse yes d 1 sin omega divided by 1 plus d 1 cos omega and for the denominator it shall be tan inverse minus d 1 and therefore, it would be twice. When you bring it to the numerator the sign is changed so it is twice all right and therefore, tau sub p of omega this is a trick that we always exercise in the case of all pass functions. We take out the linear phase term first and then we write the tan inverse function. It becomes twice of that. So, tau p omega is minus 1 you divide by omega 2 by omega tan inverse d 1 sin omega divided by 1 plus d 1 cosine omega. <coughs> When omega is small, when theta is small, tan inverse theta is approximately equal to theta. Tan inverse theta is approximately equal to theta. Sin inverse theta is also approximately theta in radians that you must remember. <laughs> Okay. Therefore, tau sub p of omega obviously if I have to make it independent of omega I must make this approximation approximately equal to minus 1 plus 2 by omega instead of tan inverse I write the function itself 1 plus d 1 cosine omega. And you see when omega is small sin omega is approximately 
omega. Therefore, minus 1 plus 2 by omega d1 omega and cosine omega is approximately 1. When omega is small, cosine omega is approximately 1. And now it becomes independent of omega and you can you can verify that this is 1 minus d1 divided by 1 plus d1 which has been defined as delta. So why do you assume omega is small? Oh, I have to, ass I have to assume omega is small to be able to convert it into a function independent of omega, all right. In other words, this tau p omega will be exact when omega equal to 0. So, tau sub p of 0 shall be exactly equal to delta. When I, when I go from, when I increase omega, it shall, there will be error. I do not know whether the error will be positive or negative, okay. So, the second part, <coughs> in the second part, my time is over, delta equal to 0 0.5 gives rise to d1 equal to one third. And 1 kilohertz is equivalent to omega equal to, yes, 1 kilohertz is 2 pi radians per second and omega is 2 pi f divided by fs and therefore I shall get 2 pi divided by 20 that is pi by 10. And then you have to calculate tau p at pi by 10. And my calculation comes out as 0 0.503. So it is not much of a deviation. 20 kilohertz sampling, 1 20th of that. 20 kilohertz sampling means I can go from 0 to 10 kilohertz only and even at 1 kilohertz the deviation is only 0 0.003, okay. I think we should stop here 1.03.